Good day, everybody. Welcome to the Bible in a Year 2021. We are on day 215. Uh, and on this day, we're going to read through 2 Chronicles chapters 32 to 33. And you know how they say in, in, in every accident, uh, each witness sees something a little bit different. Uh, that's what we have uh, when we have the, the prophets writing a bit of the history of what's going on. And then we find in First and Second Kings, and then in First and Second Chronicles, and and so all the the gaps get f f um, filled in, on, at least on the stuff that the Lord considered important for us to to know. And uh, we can be sure that there are things about other kings that we weren't informed of because it wasn't important to our journey. So we pick it up here again with Hezekiah and Hezekiah is facing Assyria. So we're going back a few steps now, but we're going to find some more details here in second Chronicles chapter 32 um, verses two to three. And this is one of the things that um, uh, Hezekiah was famous for uh, just this thing here. When Hezekiah realized that um, Seneca Kirib uh, also planned on fighting Jerusalem. He consulted with his officials and soldiers about stopping up the springs outside the city, and they supported him. So um, they're going to keep all the water for themselves. Uh, why, why should the king of Assyria show up, right, and find fresh water? Uh, and then we, we see preparations that we maybe didn't know before. Um, so Hezekiah is doing what he can, but he, he knows that um, the rescue is going to have to come from the Lord's hands, but he's still doing what he can. He stops up the, the, the outside springs, and then Hezekiah vigorously rebuilt all the broken sections of the wall, erected towers, constructed another wall outside the first, reinforced the terrace of David's city, and made a large supply of weapons and shields. Wow, they did all that in a very short period of time. Uh, that, that's pretty amazing. Uh, and then <laughs> there's even more preparation. Verses 68, he appointed military officers over the troops, assembled them in the square of the city gate, and spoke these words of encouragement. Be brave and be strong. Don't let the king of Assyria and all those warriors he brings with him scare you or cause you dismay, because our forces are greater than his. All he has is human strength, but we have the Lord our God, who will help us fight our battles. Remember um, what the prophet um, Elisha um, had, had said to his, his attendant uh, about the same thing and, and, and revealed that the army of the Lord that was around them. And Hezekiah has that insight. He has that revelation understanding. And the troops trusted Judah's king, Hezekiah. That's a huge statement right there about the kind of, of man Hezekiah is, the kind of leader uh, that he is, and, and he had the loyalty um, of his troops. They trusted him. And, and then, then, then we see this. Um, it's just kind of all put together, and it, it's, it's kind of neat to see it this way. Um, you know, what, what do you do in the face of ignorance? Yeah, because I know you guys face it all the time, but look at this. Um, in verses 19 to 21, they spoke about the God of Jerusalem, this is Assyria, the king of Assyria and his attendants. They spoke about the God of Jerusalem as though he were the work of human hands, like the gods of the other peoples of the earth. Now, that's ignorance. Assyria thought they knew um, about Israel's um, God or gods because before Hezekiah, uh, it was a pretty messed up place. And then Hezekiah came in and, and cleaned it all up. Um, so they have really misjudged this and, and they're speaking of Yahweh as if he's just um, a carved idol. King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, Amos's son, prayed about this, crying out to heaven. So they prayed. After all the preparation, it came down to prayer. Then the Lord sent a messenger who destroyed every warrior, leader, and officer in the camp of the Syrian king. When Sennacherib uh, went home in disgrace. He entered the temple of his God, and his own sons killed him with a sword. Yeah, that's how you deal with ignorance. Okay. Um, 
Now, the, the thing, uh, there's a couple of things here. We already looked at what Hezekiah had faced with, with the death. The Lord told him to get his affairs in order. And then he cried out to the Lord and the Lord granted him an extra 15 years. But look at what happened. This is what happened after he was granted that. But Hezekiah was too proud to respond appropriately to the kindness he had received. That's an, an additional 15 years of life. So pride had entered in. And so he wasn't able to um, respond appropriately. And he, along with Judah and Jerusalem, so they're following the lead of the king, experienced anger. However, Hezekiah and the citizens of Jerusalem humbled themselves in their pride. And so they didn't experience the Lord's anger for the rest of Hezekiah's reign. And um, the, 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 the whole thing that happens with the officials from Babylon just smacked of, of um, pride and, and arrogance that Hezekiah had. So come to find out, yeah, that's exactly what was going on here. Um, and then and we have this little aside here. It just adds these little things to us understanding a fuller story. So in verse 31, even the matter, even in the matter of the ambassadors sent from Babylon, um, from Babylonian officials to find out about the miraculous sign that occurred in the land when God had abandoned him in order to test him and discover what was in his heart. So the whole thing of, of the illness was um, for Hezekiah, really. It's, you know, the, the wording here is so that God could discover, but God, uh, Yahweh knows our hearts. Father knows our hearts. He knows what's in our heart. So if he leads us through things, it's so that that heart can be revealed to us so that we're able to respond to the correction. Because if correction comes in and we don't know we're in the wrong, it's going to miss the mark. Uh, so he reveals to us uh, what is in our heart. And that's what he did with Hezekiah. And we see that Hezekiah ended up repenting um, of that pride. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's you know, that's... Uh, Aside from the officials coming in, um, they came in to investigate his miraculous healing. And, and we discovered the, why, why he ended up sick in the first place. Okay, Manasseh. Okay, here's, here's some things that we're going to discover about Manasseh. And it may surprise you if you're not familiar with the story of Manasseh. So, um, first of all, uh, you know, chapter 33, verses 1 to 2. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he ruled for 55 years in Jerusalem. That's a long time. Um, he did what was evil in the Lord's eyes, imitating the detestable practices of the nations that the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. So, in other words, doing what his grandfather did. We, we already discussed this yesterday. Um, and, and just a refresher on some of the bad stuff. In verses 5 to 6, Manasseh built altars for all the stars and sky in both courtyards of the Lord's temple. He burned his own sons alive in the Ben Hinnom um, Valley, consulted sign readers, fortune tellers, and sorcerers, and used mediums and diviners. He did much evil in the Lord's eyes and made him angry. And you remember that he filled the city with innocent blood. Um, that's, that's what we find in Second Kings. Uh, now, some of the stuff you may not have known. So in verses 9 to 11, so in this way, Manasseh led, led Judah and the residents of Jerusalem into doing even more evil than the nations as the Lord had wiped out before the Israelites. The Lord spoke to Manasseh. He spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they wouldn't listen. So the Lord brought the army commanders of Assyria's king against them. They captured Manasseh with hooks, bound him with bronze chains, and carried him off to Babylon. Now, we don't read about that, do we, in, in 2 Kings, but here we find it in 2 Chronicles. But this led to something really important. This fact, in verses 12 to 13, during his distress, Manasseh made peace with the Lord his God, truly submitting himself to the God of his ancestors. He prayed. And God was moved by his request. Always, God is moved by sincere repentance. God listened to Manasseh's prayer 
and restored him to his rule in Jerusalem. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was the true God. Now, of course, with true repentance, there, there comes, uh, there comes change because true repentance provokes change. So in verses 15 to 16, he removed the foreign gods and the idol from the Lord's temple, as well as all the altars he had built on the hill of the Lord's temple and in Jerusalem, dumping them outside the city. He restored the Lord's altar, offered well-being sacrifices and thank offerings on it, and ordered the people of Judah to worship the Lord, Israel's God. Uh, but if only it was so easy, right, to uh, bring people to a place of, of, of faith. But no, um, it doesn't work that way. You can't order people into faith. And then his son follows him, and Amon is, uh, is, a, is a weaker leader than his father. Um, and so we, we read this. Amon was 22 years old when he became king, and he ruled for two years in Jerusalem. He did what was evil in the Lord's eyes, just as his father Manasseh had done. He sacrificed to all the idols his father had made and worshipped them. But unlike his father Manasseh, Amon didn't submit before the Lord. Instead, Amon increased his guilt. And, and we know that um, he was not able to protect himself. He was, not, he was not his father, and he was not able to protect himself. And he ends up being assassinated, which is going to leave room now for Josiah, who we will learn about soon. So thanks for being part of this. And I hope you take away some of these gems, such as the, the way that the Father's heart is moved by sincere repentance and um, other such things. You guys have a, a blessed and wonderful day, and we will meet up again tomorrow. Love you guys.